The Great Steam Demo Update 2024. Making demos an even more powerful and flexible marketing tool. Okay. So far, a demo version that I have, at least in my case, oftentimes, that I have used is if I wanted to play a game and I wasn't sure if the game is good or not, then I could download the demo and then test out beforehand whether I like the game or not. But I feel like oftentimes this... At least in my case, right? I might be a special case. This leads to less sales. However, I might just be completely wrong about this. A demo version is always great to test out the game before you can actually... Or before you actually have to invest money. And I did that, for example, to play Ember Watch. We got a lot of stuff in the game that we could test out in the demo version. Obviously, some stuff was locked behind the full version. But we got like almost two hours worth of gameplay out of the demo which is a lot really cool with thousands of new playable game demos launching every year often as part of steam next fest we've noticed some trends in feedback from developers and players about the changes they like to see made in the process and functionality so we have put together an update based on that feedback demos now behave better in the steam library yeah they should behave better so why like the reason why exactly this is what we want but oftentimes what you see on steam is this but i'm looking for is this little demo button on the right here or the old button yeah the old button i was wondering whether that is still there anyways i can't find it but essentially if you did it wrong what you would have is instead of this big green button that screams at you basically saying this is a demo version that you can download you would have a small little button in blue to the right that would indicate that you could play the demo but it wasn't really obvious that it was there in my opinion this was always one of the biggest annoyances of demos but yeah this is the download demo button i was talking about and uh, looks like they are updating they behave better in the steam library let's see we've made few updates to how demos appear and behave within the steam library here are the key items you can add demos to your library without immediately installing them you will find an add to library button appearing for demos now that let you add to your library from the mobile app or other places where you may not be ready to install them immediately. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Demos can be installed even if you already own the full game. Primarily, this will make it easier for developers to test. Yes, so this was the issue. Since I already owned the demo version of my game, I couldn't install my own game anymore because I'm the owner of the demo version because I own the store page. I can download and play the demo. Or was it? I might be wrong here. But it will also help develop help players more easily manage, uh, manage installing and uninstalling demos. Demos can be explicit removed from the account by right clicking manage remove from account when a demo is uninstalled it will automatically get removed from your library demos can now have a separate store page now i don't know about this one being smart or not because i feel like the store page not only do you have to make two store pages then that maybe look identical what about wish lists like you can follow here immediately. You can wishlist at the same place here. And you have the demo being like a small little part of the main store page. I think that's the best thing to have. Not sure if a different page for demo is a good idea. Might be harder to make the player wishlist the actual game. Yeah, that's what I think so too. That's exactly my question, yeah. By default, your free demo appears as a button on your base game store page. But if you want to have a separate store page for your demo, you can now enable that in the edit store section of your, for your demo. Enabling a separate store page for your demo will give you space to better describe the contents of the demo, add screenshots, upload a trailer, and specify supported features. I feel like this only applies to some tryhards that feel like they get anything out, like their own demo store page. I don't feel like this could apply to like a real scenario of like an indie developer or a smaller developer making a game. You want to advertise your main game and the demo version is just part of that. It's like an asset. Tight, uh, sorry. Tight connection with your base game. Standalone demo store pages will automatically display both the demo install button as well as a widget linking back to the full game for players interested in wishlisting. See, so you have to now click a button to link to the game and then 
once you're on the store page for your game, you have to click the wishlist button. I think that's bad because you have two clicks instead of one. If you go to the store page of your game right now, and then you have the demo version right here, you played the demo version. Well, right below there is a wishlist button. So like if you have to now click another button, then the program will load slowly, bring you to the page, and then you have to add to, to the wishlist. I don't know about that, man. Not sure. What do you guys think? User reviews for demos. If you choose to enable a store page for your demo, you will be enabling players for your demo. This is actually really good. I like that. That's smart. You will also be enabling players of your demo to post the user reviews that appear on your demo. These reviews and review score will appear on your demo store page, just like reviews for any other game on Steam. Huh, that's actually a good idea. If you choose to not have a store page for your demo, then the user reviews will not appear for your demo. Store page mostly doesn't impact visibility. The Steam store will treat your demo mostly the same way whether you have enabled a standalone store page or not. One factor that may come into play if it, if, is if your demo ends up having a bunch of negative reviews, it might be less appealing to potential players, may get filtered out of some views if the re review score is too low. Of course, the flip side can be true too. If players are loving your demo, the pot positive review signal to other players may boost the interest. So I don't know if it's smart, actually. Is it smart to have a separate store page for your demo? And then that's basically treated as advertisement for your main game where you can farm reviews and store page impressions just like it is a real game without it being a real game. Could you potentially use demo versions now on Steam to create games that take you, let's say, a week to make or maybe two weeks to make? If you're experienced, of course, right? We're talking about experienced developers here. Then you create a store page, a demo page, and you see how many players are playing the demo version and one more. Could this be like, uh, you know, like the mobile games? I think this could be a good thing to do. Maybe I'm actually going to make a separate store page. It decreases the ratio of refund copies, I think. Hmm, it could be. Because, the well, if your game blows, right, if it's bad, then obviously the demo will fall out of favor. But let's say your game or the demo version is really popular, people like it, they play it for long, they don't have to pay. So it's basically the demo version, they will track how long people will play your demo. Interesting. Demos now behave more like separate games. For example, demos can now appear on the Steam homepage, such as the new and trending, on the new on Steam page and on relevant tag and category pages. This means that launching a new free demo for your game will behave similar as launching a free standalone game on Steam. Yeah, that's what I thought. Huh. Wishlist notified when you launch your demo. Wishlisters. Aha. We, we have now also made it so that when releasing your playable demo, Steam can send an email to wishlisters of your base game and followers of your developers slash publisher. For example, for people that are already looking forward to the release of your game, this gives them a taste of the game's experience and reminds them to tell their friends. Note that you have some control over when this email goes out as well as some limitations. For example, you may want to delay the email by a few days if you plan to release your demo during the next Steam Fest preview but want to notify your wishlist just until the next fest. Okay, so but what happens if I release my demo version, the players played the demo version, and then I shut the demo version down? Can I like always do this? Can I keep iterating? Because the reason to have a demo version is to iterate, right? Or at least that's how I see it. You put out a demo version, you test the interest, then players like it or not. If it's not going well... Then you just private the demo and you do it all over again. I was such a huge fan of those demo CDs on the PlayStation 1 for the PlayStation 1, the good old days. Yeah, true. The reason is to have, so that people can try before they buy without a two-hour limit. Yeah, like, so how I see this is you make a demo version, you test out whether people like it or not. Then you get a bunch of feedback and you change the game based on the feedback and also the demo version. And whenever you have a new push or a new patch for the demo version that's a big patch it doesn't behave like a real game let's see optional separate store page you can provide detailed written description you can list the features players of the demo leave reviews regardless of whether you create a separate store page your demo will be a button 
on your base game store page okay steam automatically includes a prominent link to your demo store page back to your full game yeah but why not just wishlist the main game from the demo game i don't understand have a link and a wishlist at the same time i don't feel demo is about testing at all steam has testing releases separately but it is a test launching a demo like a real game is a test of your game let's say you get 50 reviews and 30 of those reviews are positive and 20 of them are negative then that's a test to you like you know okay so if i had to launch my game right now I would have gotten this amount of traction and this amount of reviews. Now, I don't know whether you miss your mark then. You, let's say you, make, you made your demo version, you put it out to the public, uh, you gained feedback, but also maybe some people have already made up their decision on the game. And then all of a sudden, the next time you release your game, actually, they are not going to be interested anymore. That could also be it, right? Interesting. I think this has potential. I would need to see an example of how it worked for someone else. Or maybe test it myself if we get out our demo reasonably fast.